Hi, I'm Miss Cathy from Birmingham Junior. Today I'm going to read My Mother's Eyes, the story of an Australian boy soldier written by Mark Wilson. There was a big gum tree at the end of the track. William and his mates would climb to the top of it, shouting to each other over the noise of the wind as it rustled the leaves. William loved the call of magpies at sunrise and the hazy blue mountains in summer. The crunch of early morning frost underfoot was as familiar and comforting to William as his mother's eyes. Together they would watch the grey kangaroos grazing at the, traffic, at the tree lines before William brought the cows in for milking. In the spring, he waited for the black cockatoos to come gliding in over the fields. Then he knew it was time to help Grandpa with the ploughing. During the winter of 1914, as his grandfather sat by the radio listening to the news, William went about his chores as usual. When he came in for dinner, his mother had tears in her eyes. She hugged him tightly without speaking. William had grown close to his mum over the years. He had helped her to look after his baby sister after their father died, thrown from a horse and trampled down by the creek. It was hard for his mum and grandpa after that. So as soon as he was 14, William left school to help on the farm. Gradually, all the boys Williams grew up with followed the men and left the district to join the army. He stayed to help his mum and grandpa for as long as he could. A few weeks before his 16th birthday, he quietly slipped out the back door with an old suitcase. Through the darkness, he walked down the track to the railway station. William told the recruiting officers he was 18. The doctor checked his teeth, heart, lungs and blood pressure. By the end of the day, he was given a haircut, a uniform and new boots. It wasn't long before William and the other recruits were on their way to basic training. They talked on the train about the great adventure as some of the boys were, call it, were called for war. He wrote a letter to his mother from the camp. William's regiment sailed for Egypt during the next few weeks. In the shadow of the Great Pyramids, the Australians rode camels and played cricket. In between fierce stand sandstorms and in sweltering heat, they also trained to be soldiers. The troops returning to Egypt from Gallipoli told stories of valour and heroism, but many were wounded and many died. William helped where he could. Often he would just sit and listen, so the wounded soldiers had someone to talk to. More troops were arriving from Australia when orders came for William's battalion to pack up their gear. The sky was clear at sunrise as they sailed for Europe, leaving the pyramids flies and heat far behind. On the ship's deck, they played cards and sang songs while others slept. There was only a distant sense of what danger lay ahead for them all. The battalion arrived at France at a place called the nursery sector. From there, they could hear the guns roaring and the shells exploding. They saw the wounded coming back from the front, just as they had in Egypt. Many had terrible injuries, but others just stared with a blank look in their eyes and wouldn't or couldn't speak. William and his mates pressed on towards the front, marching through the mud and the rain. During the worst winter in France for many years, they entered the trenches near the town of Bullcourt. There was constant shelling as William and his mates huddled in their trenches, trying to escape the rain and snow. There were 
they were also trying to avoid the horror of drowning in the sea of mud that surrounded them. Spring came early that year and brought its own problems. Early one morning in May, as the sky cleared, a message came down the line. There was going to be a charge at the enemy lines during the night. With the roar of cannons and explosions in the distance, they waited hour after hour. Then just before sunrise, silence. A whistle blew. William's mum and little sister were inside getting ready for dinner. The sun had set beyond the mountains and the magpies were calling across the paddocks. A gentle breeze rustled the leaves for the, through the gum trees. William's grandpa sat on the porch with a letter in his withered old hands. The sky was clear and the stars shone brightly, just like it said in the letter as he read on his hands begin to tremble. We lived felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Author's note uh, in regards to this book, the Australian boy soldier lied about their age to join up during the First World War. Some were as young as 16 when they were wounded and killed. Those who paid the ultimate price are listed on the Australian War Memorial Roll of Honour in Canberra.